awesome Sylvia Pippin studio. And she is located in Laconer, Washington. The first time I met her actually was at a Silomar, the Empty Spools uh, Seminars in Pacific Grove. And it was an eye-opening experience for me because I had never really done Sashiko. And she is the Sashiko artist. So um, we're here at her studio now that she's relocated. So how's the relocation gone? We absolutely love it here. It was a bit tricky, you know, picking up from Hawaii and plopping down in Washington. But we've adjusted. We love the community. We love the weather here. It's really nice to have Four Seasons. And it's been a most welcoming community, especially the quilt museum. And my parents moved here. My mother was, you know, a pretty famous quilter. And her name? Kitty Pippin. Kitty Pippin. And she taught at the Lamar for seven years. Oh, so she yes. was an yes. instructor there too at Empty Spools. And she works with Japanese fabric. So she's here in La Conner and is my greatest supporter and harshest critic. <laughs> <laughs> that's and a mother. That's uh, a mother, yeah. So you left behind though a grandbaby. And I did. Grandbaby. I, I remember did. that yes. was when we were taking classes, when the fabric stockers were taking classes with you, we were waiting with bated breath for the birth. And she was born during yeah. the Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was so she awesome. She was a year and a half, and I've been to Hawaii four times. <laughs> and I'm going again in December, and, uh -huh. and we FaceTime every day. So. Oh, you do. We do. Isn't so, that wonderful? I have to start doing that. Now, see, yes. I haven't really figured that one out. Great. So. I'll show you a picture later. Yeah. Oh, good, <laughs> good. I know I've seen pictures on uh, yeah. Facebook and stuff, and she's absolutely adorable. Yeah. So I'm going back and forth a lot, and that's just fine. So anyway, I feel blessed to have some family here, and my son may move out here as well So mm -hmm. from Montana. So he's uh, a graphic designer and helps me with like the jellyfish design. We worked on that together and since he's a very good, he's got a really good eye. So mm -hmm. it's definitely a family affair. My, my daughter is my bookkeeper. She's a CPA so she tells me everything I'm doing wrong with the business. And I have a CPA child there. too. It's, it, it, it's a blessing <laughs> and a, a curse. curse. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, you know, so but anyway, she keeps me on track. So uh -huh. that's a good thing. So the Sashiko designs, if you've never done it before, it's a very specific type of running stitch, am I correct? correct? Yes. Using a specific kind of thread and needle. And it gives a very, uh, I think consistency is the number one. Keeping your stitches even, yeah, but it has, the thread is a, is a heavy Egyptian cotton and it has a characteristic fuzzy look that you don't get from pearl cotton and some other other kinds so it's, it's a really and it's interesting because I got a call uh, it you know how the world is kind of funny in in its own way uh, yesterday I got a call from a friend who was doing sash was going to do a sashical piece for the first time and wanted to use pearl cotton and I said you could do that but it's not fuzzy so I remember yeah, okay, that good. class <laughs> good, yes. it's not fuzzy and so it is a different thread and a different needle but uh, I said since you don't have either you can give it a try yeah. and, and see how you like it it'll be a different look yeah exactly one of the things that's so fabulous about uh, Sylvia's designs there's two two really uh, awesome facets is one is the applique that goes with it and the other is what's called sinotype and it's where you're uh, bleaching the color out of the fabric is that it's actually the sun? it's treated it's a fabric that's treated with chemicals that are not toxic it's an old photographic process it's about 200 years old they actually used to make blueprints on oh, paper uh -huh. and also it's become a photographic art form but you take the cloth and it's dry and then you put botanicals or transparencies that have been drawn on. on we'll, we'll look at some quilts for those on later. And then you put it out in the sun. And so the sun, actually, or the sun, um, where there's, say the leaves are, are blocking it, th that will turn white or shades of blue. And then the, the rest of the fabric turns an indigo, beautiful, well, cyanotype blue, really. And, um, but they, you know, it comes in green and pink and purple, so you can, depending on the fabric that's used, you can, you can get other color forms, but it's a really, I was excited about it because, you know, traditional sashiko is done on in blue indigo, and this is sort of the blue and white, it's just yeah. such a beautiful combination. So, 
Yes, that's that. I'm doing a lot of cyanotype workshops now. Well, for those of you that follow me on the Wooly blog, the cyanotype blocks that are up on my design wall that every so often you see are actually uh, Sylvia's block of the month that the fabric stalkers all jumped on uh, when we were down in the Silomar. And so I have all my cyanotype blocks done. Awesome. And then I now, um, oh, of course, Val, Val, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bailey, if she uh, hers is done and hanging, but but she had a she had a total knee, and we said the only reason she got it done was <laughs> she was sick yes. to her total yes. knee. Yeah. <laughs> so, but neither Lori or I wanted to total knee in yeah. order to get no, ours no. done. Oh, well, this is the wrong one here. Oh, did I bring my wrong? Oh, I brought my wrong one. Well, anyway, I am now down to the um, the. Oh, circles? The oh, circles. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm uh, down to those blocks. Uh, Lori is, if not in the same spot ahead yeah, of me. Great. So I already have a spot in Portland where I'm going to hang it, and I can't wait till that. And now that I see this is, I know that I am, I'm going to be doing this new um, block of the month. And that's the other thing is that Sylvia also does a lot of awesome applique and it's it's kind of like in the uh, fabric choices that just make that applique if you ever you need to go onto the internet and like google images and look at all the floral um, the tropical floral quilts that she includes and and here we have the latest one that will be released later this year and it is uh, that one more step I think because you not only have a, a variation of colored threads, in any one spot you have two colors of threads, so it even gives a whole different look to the sashiko stitching. Yeah, I'm starting to double up some of the threads because then it pops it, pops it out. Yeah. Like this was, I think I did it in blue first and it really receded, then I outlined it, because it's always experimental, and then I outlined it in the white and said yes, so that makes it pop. Mm -hmm. And um, so and so this is a stretch for me to use all these different colors and I'm really happy with the effect. Well obviously it wasn't painful. Yeah, but you know, but uh, designing the coral was painful, you know, there was lots uh -huh. of failures that you know end up uh, under the under the bed <laughs> or whatever. Oh. <laughs> I wish I was here for those rejects. I would take those rejects. But I started with this, this, uh, yeah, so yeah. this this one I really liked, and then uh, my daughter did my books and said, you better get a block of the month out, you're way behind in sales. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this, the rest of this was done, has been done in about two weeks, three weeks. That, that CPA person. Oh huh? boy, I know, they light a fire on you, I know. No, <laughs> so. I know, here I've been, you know, where we're camping right now, it, I have like zero cell service, and uh, the person I'm most worried that can't get a hold of me is the CPA guy, yeah. <laughs> that, that younger child of mine. <laughs> I hope he's not trying to text me or something. Yeah. Now this is also um, just, uh, I, I can't, it's exquisite, uh, and I know that the fabric shoppers are going to just love this, but to insert this perfect piece of fabric into the sashiko. So, <coughs> that's a, that. that piece of fabric, and I could show you the fabric if you want to see what it uh -huh. comes from, because I think, I think one of the things that I do a lot in my classes, you know, is how do you find these spots in the fabric that are going to, I like to use the least amount of fabric with the most effect, instead of, you know, putting a zillion little applique, which I'm going to do in some of my flowers, but I like to right. find, you know, the right piece of fabric so that I don't have to do so many pieces. Make it and so complicated. this is um, a turned applique. You're it is appliqueing down. Yeah, and that was done with the Mylar method. So uh -huh. I always preform all the shapes so that I have, show you this, you know, everything is turned. And that's done with a mylar method. So everything is um, stitched and layered, and then and then what I can do is it's it's a finished 
shape. So then I'm what I'm doing now is I'm playing around with placement because that's so important. So this is this is not fixed yet. My mother, the master, and Marianne who works with me are going to we're going to play with this this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then I could put some fabric glue on there and glue them down. Probably take a photograph of it and then then I'll glue it and then applique each one down. So um, I've got three different applique methods. It's mylar method, and I use the postage label method where you put a sticky postage label on top and then turn it and glue it. Mm -hmm. And then I use And we applique. learned that yes. all in your yes. class. And that's why, um, for those of us that are not designers, but we are the quilt customers, these classes that are taught by Sylvia and other designers at like places like Asilomar, Empty Spools, um, there's also places up here that throw workshops up together. Those are so important because you learn all those uh, little tips that when you're sitting at home by yourself trying to figure it out, at least for me, that's, uh, that's a, a, a difficult task. I, I can do what someone shows me. So, yeah, so that's what we do. We'll do all those three methods because applique has so many ways to approach applique. And, and people will choose their favorite method. You know, one is great for traveling, like the postage label, because you don't need an iron. Right. You know, the, the others are so. Um, and then choosing the fabrics that are perfect for each piece. So, like this fish here has like four different fabrics in it to make up that one little fish. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, that's just fabulous. And in the little tiger, right? Tiger fish, that perfect fabric. So, when you are shopping for fabric, you're looking beyond the fabric. Where I tend to go, oh, I want this whole yarn.